Hello, this is Jonathan Kane, KM4CFT, and today I'll be showing you how to build your KM4CFT NFED Halfwave using the KM4CFT NFED kit. Now, the KM4CFT um, NFED kit is something that takes inspiration from the work of Adam Kimmerly K6ARK, uh, except that mine uh, takes sacrifices a bit of size to um, aid in assembly by making it all through whole components and much easier to assemble. In this video specifically, I'll be showing you how to build the NFED halfway version of this, though the kit can also be done, can be made into an NFED random wire. So without further ado, let's get started. So to build this kit, you're going to need the following tools. You're going to need some flush cuts, uh, some needle nose pliers, a ruler, soldering iron, some solder, and this is, you don't need this necessarily, but it's incredibly useful to have some helping hands. So when you get your kit, it should say KM4 CFT NFED half wave slash NFED random wire, and Let's check to make sure we have all the components that um, we need. You should have the following. You should have the circuit board. You should have six inches of 26 gauge poly stealth wire, 18 inches of 28 gauge magnet wire, an FT50-43 um, toroid, a 100 picofarad um, 1 kV capacitor, a BNC connector, and three quarter inch heat shrink tubing. Okay, so since we're building the NFED half wave, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna um, attach the wire to the board. Okay, to get this heated up. Uh, so with an NFED half wave, you um, don't need a counterpoise though it can be useful. If you choose not to do a counterpoise, you might lose, you might have a slight loss in performance, but you can also compensate for that by having a long length of, uh, a long length of feed line going to the, going to the uh, board. Um, for example, um, I don't typically use a counterpoise, but I have a 25 length inch, uh, 25 foot length of RG316 um, coax that I run from my transceiver to to my um, antenna, and that and the shielding of that forms my counterpoise. But in this in this video, I will be sh I will be um, showing you how to do it with the counterpoise. So first things we're gonna do is we're gonna take our wire and we're gonna cut it in half like that. Next, we're going to using our flush cuts. We're gonna very carefully strip off about a tiny amount of wire that's about an eighth of an inch. We're gonna do that for both wires, like so. All right, so if you look at the um, circuit board, there are, t there are two holes we have one that says CP for counterpoise and one says ANT for antenna. We're gonna to want to solder them into there. We want the wire to go from the top side, like so. So I'm gonna stick them in like this. And like this. I'm gonna rotate it this way, actually. And then I'm going to flip it over and solder it in place. Okay, and so now that I've got these soldered in place, if you'll notice there, next step we're gonna do is we're going to um, activate the strain relief on this. So if you notice, there are four holes surrounding this toroid, and those are used for strain relief. So we're gonna take the wire, we're gonna feed it through like that. And we're gonna do that for both, both sides. 
and then we're going to feed them uh, from the bottom up to the top again. And now we have it like that. Should look like that. And that's our stream relief. Okay, so the next step is we're going to get to wind the toroid and that might require me to change my, uh, wait, that's gonna require me to change the camera angle so that you get a better view of what I'm doing. Okay, so what I'm gonna be showing you is how to wind the toroid. This is gonna be kind of awkward because I'm not used to winding while filming at the same time, so please bear with me. Uh, what you want to do is your wire will come um, wrapped up, so unfurl it and straighten it out like this. And what we're going to want to do is we're going to be making, we're going to be winding the transformer. The um, typical ratio that you're going to want to do is three turns to twenty-one turns. However, if you want to do something, optimize it for let's say eighty meters, you might want to do three to twenty-four. If you want to do like ten meters, you might do three to nineteen. But in general, three to twenty-one is going to be your best bet. So to do that. We're going to take our ruler and we're going to measure it three inches out. We're going to form a bend at three inches, like that. Okay, so when we do this, we're going to want it. You're going to want it so you're going to want to wind it such that when you're holding it, you want your short end to be on the left and your long end to be on the right. Okay, and then we're going to do three wraps with the um, double. So, we're going to hold it like this. And every time we pass the center, that counts as a turn, so... So that's one turn. And three turn. And I kind of um, went a little bit too short. I'm going to make a quick adjustment and be right back. Okay, so we're back. Um, I, all I've done is just make a quick adjustment just so that we are, so that the um, windings are a little bit more even. But um, you can see in the camera is that there are, I've done three, tr uh, dot, three, three by filer turns. One, two, and three. Um, we have our um, pigtail here and a pigtail here. This is going to be um, our input. This is going to be the ground, and we need to wind the second, the rest of the secondary. So we do, we need to do twenty one turns for the secondary. However, we've already done the first three. So so since we've done three, I can continue on. So four. And finally, 21. All right, so now that we have, so now that I've done my 21 windings, I am going to want to um, count them. So, uh, let's grab my, grab my tool. So that's always important, double check. So we have our so one, two, three, and twenty one. All right, so there's our twenty one windings. We're gonna kind of want to gonna want to um, straighten this out and then kind of spread everything out, make it all clean. Nice and even. Okay, so now we've got everything all, all wound up and as you'll notice, there are three connections. We have our input, our ground, and our output. And what we're gonna wanna do 
is we are going to want to solder this into place. So first things first, there's a little uh, loop here. Squeeze it so that it's nice and flat, so it'll fit through the hole. We're going to be soldering some uh, enamel wire to the board. Uh, so some things about enamel wire is that uh, there are different ways to remove the coating. Um, there are mechanical means, so you could use a hobby knife or a or some sandpaper. Um, the other options you can use a lighter to um to use you can use heat either like through a flame or through the heat of the solder. Now, all of those work. All of them will work fine. Uh, what I like to do is I like to do a little bit of a combination of them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to scrape away some of the enamel just to make it easier on me and then finish it off with the solder. You want to be careful when you're using a hobby knife so that you don't, so you don't end up nicking the wire. But just want to get some of it removed. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take my soldering iron, I'm going to raise the temperature a little bit by about 50 degrees. And this will make it a little bit easier. As you can see on this board, let me bring it in a little bit better, a little bit closer. There are three holes here. We're going to want to line them up. So this is your input, this is your output, and this is your ground. So you'll want to line them up like so. We'll do that. Then we're going to flip it over and we're going to pull these tight. And then what we're going to do is we are going to take our soldering iron. We're going to apply some solder. And we're going to let it sit there for about 10 seconds. You'll notice it'll be bubbling. And that bubbling is the enamel burning off. All right, cool. So we got that taken care of. Let's clean out the iron. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our wire snips, and cut off the excess, like that. Next step of this assembly is to install our capacitor. So there's a spot that says C1. We're gonna to want to stick the stick the connector, stick the in, in, into the C1 spot, and we're gonna bend them out, bend the leads out like that. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna solder those into place. Okay. Then we're gonna take our flush cuts, clip off the excess. Okay, and then we got this. We got our capacitor installed. The final thing we need to install now is our BNC connector. What I recommend doing is one is get the BNC connector into place, place it into its component spot, and this is where um, some helping hands will really come in handy. Hold it up like that, where it's on its top, and then we're going to solder from the top side, and this um, prevents us from having to like use glue or anything to hold it in place. So we'll feed some solder into there, and that will tack it in place. And if you did it cleanly, you might actually have soldered on the bottom side too, which we'll take a look at real quick. So you see on the bottom side, it all, let's bring it up closer. As you can see, uh, that bottom side ended up uh, getting soldered too. So now all we need to do is solder these two lugs. This is gonna be the part that's the most time consuming. Uh, 
You might even need a larger soldering iron depending on how powerful it is. Be patient with it because we're gonna need to end up heating, this is gonna be heating up the whole body of your BNC connector. So you gotta get that hot. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna feed solder and this is just gonna take a moment. All right, so at this point, one is be careful because this is gonna be super hot. So I will hold it with some pliers, but at this point, your um, KM4CFT um, NFED half wave is more or less complete. The only thing that's left to do is for you to do a test and for you to um, so attach your heat shrink tubing. Uh, what we're going to do is um, we're going to take it out to the field and I'm going to uh, hook up some wire to this and then show you how I um, do this for a single band 20 meter and then we will be back once I do the test. Okay, so what I've done so far is I've set up my Nano VNA right here and I've um, connected it to Nano VNA Saver with my, my little Evolve laptop. I prefer to use Nano VNA, VNA Saver because I can get a lot more control and a lot more power out of the Nano VNA due to the fact that I can do multiple sweeps. And I've basically set up my antenna in a simplified way of what I would normally do. So I normally do it in the sloper configuration with this coax. You can see it runs all the way over here then runs up to the top of that mast. And what I've done is I have used two zip ties to um, hold, it, hold it in the loop so that I can quickly adjust the length as needed. So next what I do is I'm going to adjust that length until it matches around the middle of the 20 meter band. So I have sweep nano VNA, I sweep myself and we looked at marker one I've set is where the um, resonant point is and we can see it's at 12.9 so about about 13 megahertz so it's too long uh, so what I'm going to need I'm going to do is I will lower the antenna the mast and then adjust it and cut them in about six inch in increments until I get it into resonance and we, if you look we can see that Theoretically, the um, VSWR, that's like, it says it's 1.018, so that's practically perfectly resonant. So this one's working really well. So I will be back once I get that taken care of. Alrighty, so I've went ahead and got, I've cut a, a couple sections. I think I cut about two feet worth of uh, wire from it. And I leave a little bit of extra on the loop so that I can actually connect a, um, another um, crimp-on connector. And the advantage of that is that this is um, cut for 20 meters. If I want to make it work for 40 meters, I can actually add a link to that. So that's something I do with mine, with, with my antennas. Um, and let's see um, what I've got. So let me actually clear that reference. So this is what we've got. You can see that that, that highlighted area is a 20 meter band and the entire band is under 1.5. In fact, let's adjust it. 14 megahertz. So let's do 14 to 14.5. If we sweep that, basically see the entire band is like 1.3 or below. That's about the middle point. It's about 14.1, which is exactly where I wanted it to. Uh, so I'm just, the last things we need to do is add some heat shrink to the um, Anun. And that should be about it. And with that, you've completed your um, NFED half-wave antenna. All right, so we've more or less completed the test. So now I'm gonna install the heat shrink tubing. So I'm gonna take it and take a look at it, make sure it's not too long. 
which it looks fine. If it's um, too long, then what you're going to want to do is um, cut it shorter with like a pair of, with like some scissors. So I don't have a proper um, heat gun. If you do, use it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to slide my heat shrink over it. And then I have a lighter. All right, that's it. And with that, you've completed your um, KM4 CFT NFED half wave, and I hope you have fun with it. Uh, some final things to um, to report on. Uh, this uses an FT5043 toroid, so um, that is rated for 5 watts CW in digital or 10 watts single sideband. Uh, that is the the um, power rating of a of these types of um, antennas is dependent on the um, heat that is generated uh, as it passes through the uh, toroid. If the toroid gets too hot, it'll permanently damage it. So, if you can, um, if as long as the toroid doesn't get too hot, it will um, work fine. So, you could possibly do uh, higher power levels as long as you monitor the temperature but I'm just gonna say that as long as you keep the 5 watts CW and 10 watts single sideband is gonna guarantee you'll be able to run it continuously without any problems. Uh, as for portability what I typically bring is I have this this is a winder designed by K6ARK. You can find it on printables. If you have a 3D printer I recommend 3D printing one of these and of course it clips into place just just fine um, and it winds around that and then what I do is I secure the um, ends I, I secure it with actually a hairband that I got it like target and that'll that'll do the trick uh, and with that I'll say 7-3 and hope you enjoy your KM4 CFT and fed half wave alrighty so I've went ahead and I have set up my IC705 for the NFET half wave. Let me show you what, what I've done so far. So, NFET half wave, it, we have our 25 feet of coax. And I've run it, I've run it to the um, matching unit. And it's running all the way up to this mast, which I have lashed to the this um, park bench and actually works really well. You can get th and you can get these little wire tie things. Um, you can find them uh, at Home Depot. They work really great. I don't know what they're called though. Unfortunately, I forget. Um, but let me show you the SWR scan, and we'll jump on and start doing some Hoda and. See, it's practically nothing. If I go to meters, we can see practically nothing. And I can jump around the band. So here's around 14.05. It's a little bit higher on 14.05. I've got it set. Yeah, it's practically nothing. Around 14.1 is where I set it to be at minimum. So let me um, get cameras uh, set up and I'll be right back. All right, let's get started. CQ Poda, CQ Poda, CQ Parks on the Air. This is Kilo Mike 4, Charlie Foxtrot, Tango, calling CQ Parks on the Air, QRZ, QRZ. Whiskey Zero, Tango Tango Golf. Whiskey Zero, Tango Tango Golf. Um, you are 5x9, five 5x9 nine, five nine in the park at Kilo 1212, QSL? QSL, you're 5'9 back into northwest Missouri, just north of Kansas City. QSL, QSL, 7'3 and thanks for hunting. 
Thank you for 73. This is Kilo Mike 4, Charlie Fox, Tango calling CQ for Parks in the Air. Kilo Kilo 7, Oscar Quebec Lima. Kilo Kilo 7, Oscar Quebec Lima, 5x9 in the park, Kilo 1212, QSL? QSL, you're 5'9 in the Billings of Montana. Copy the 5x9 in the Montana, 7-3 and thanks for hunting. Thank you, 7-3. This is Kilo Mike 4, Charlie Fox Tango calling CQ for Parks in the Air. Whiskey 7, Bravo, Foxtrot, November, 5x3, 5x3 in the park, Kilo, 1212. Copy the 5x4 in the southwest Idaho. Good job on the QRP, um, also QRP. 7-3 uh, and thanks for hunting. Uh, sure. Uh, park number is Kilo, 1212. That is Chatfield State Park. Um, uh, just south of uh, Denver, Colorado. 7-3. This is Kilo Mike 4, Charlie Fox Tango calling CQ for Parks on the Air. CQ Poda, CQ Poda, CQ for Parks on the Air. This is Kilo Mike 4, Charlie Fox Trot Tango calling CQ for Parks on the Air. Kilo X-ray station, go ahead. Alpha Bravo 6, Kilo X-ray. Alpha Bravo 6, Kilo X-ray, 5x7, five 5x7 seven, five seven in the park, Kilo 1212, QSL. QSL 5x7, you are also 5x7, Southern California, QSL. QSL, QSL, copy the 5x7, Southern California, 73, and thanks for hunting. This is Kilo Mike 4, Charlie Fox Tango calling CQ for Parks in the Air. Hello CQ, hello CQ, CQ Poda, CQ Poda, CQ for Parks on the Air. This is Kilo Mike 4, Charlie Fox Drop Tango calling CQ for Parks on the Air. Kilo Bravo 0, Kilo Fox Drop Hotel. Kilo Bravo 6, uh, sorry, Kilo Bravo 0, Kilo Fox Hotel, uh, 5x9 in the park, Kilo 1212. Five, six into Oklahoma. Thanks for the activation. Copy the 5x6 into Oklahoma. 7 3 and thanks for hunting. Yep, three. KB zero, KB. This is Kilo Mike 4, Charlie Fox Tango calling CQ for Parks on the Air. Whiskey Quebec 9, Victor. Whiskey Quebec 9, Victor. 5x9 in the park, Kilo 1212. QSL. Whiskey Quebec. Whiskey Quebec 9 Victor, 5x9 in the park, Kilo 1212, QSL. CQ Poda, CQ Poda, CQ for Parks on the Air. This is Kilo Mike 4, Charlie Fox Tango calling CQ for Parks on the Air. Okay, let's do the Kilo Kilo station. Kilo Kilo 7, can you get the rest? Kilo Kilo 7, Alpha X-ray Oscar, you're coming into Western Washington State of the 5 3. Alright, got it that time. Kilo Kilo 7, Alpha X-ray Oscar, uh, copied the 5 by 2, you're about a 5 by 3, 5 by 3 in the park, Kilo 1212. This is Kilo Mike 4, Charlie Fox, Tingo Kong, CQ for Parks in the Air. Whiskey Delta 8, Echo Bravo Zulu. Whiskey Delta 8, Echo Bravo Zulu, 5x9 in the park, Kilo 1212. Delta 5 9, Southeast Michigan, thank you. Copy the 5x9 in the Southeast Michigan, 7 3, and thanks for hunting. This is Kilo Mike 4, Charlie Fox, Tango calling CQ for Parks on the Air. Hello CQ, CQ Poda, CQ Poda, CQ for Parks on the Air. This is Kilo Mike 4, Charlie Foxtrot Tango calling CQ for Parks on the Air. Whiskey 3, Quebec Lima Charlie. Whiskey 3, Quebec Lima Charlie, 5x9 in the park, Kilo 1212, QSL. QSL, I have you 5x5 in Minnesota, Mike November. Copy the 5x5 five five in the Minnesota, 7-3 and thanks for hunting. QSL, 73. 
This is Kilo Mike 4, Charlie Fox Tango calling CQ for Parks in the Air. November 7, Delta Bravo, India. November 7, Delta Bravo, India, 59 plus, 59 plus in the park, Kilo 1212. Thank you for the 59, appreciate that. I have your 57 Idaho, India Delta. Copy the 5 by 7 in Idaho, 73, and thanks for hunting. 73, have a great weekend in 7 DBI. This is Kilo Mike 4, Charlie Fox Tango calling CQ for Parks on the Air. Uh, station ending in Delta. Whiskey 3, Alpha, Romeo, Delta. Whiskey 3, Alpha, Romeo, Delta. 5 by 9 into Park Kilo 1212. You are 5 9 plus into Waco, Texas. Copy the 5 by 9 to Waco, Texas. 7 3 and thanks for hunting. 73, thanks for activating. This is Kilo Mike 4, Charlie Fox Tango calling CQ for Parks on the Air. Whiskey Juliet 8 Yankee. Whiskey Juliet 8 Yankee. 5 by 9 to Park Kilo 1212. QSL? Whiskey Juliet 8 Yankee, 5x9 to the park, Kilo 1212. Whiskey Juliet 8 Yankee, 5x9 into, into park, Kilo 1212, QSL. I think I lost ya. This is Kilo Mike 4, Charlie Fox Tingo calling CQ for parks on the air. Kilo 7, November 6, Gulf Romeo. November 6, Golf Romeo, 5x9 to Park Kilo 1212. Thank you, you're 5x5, five five, New Mexico. Copy the 5x5 five five into New Mexico, 73, thanks for hunting. 73. This is Kilo Mike 4, Charlie Fox Tingo calling CQ for Parks in the Air. Kilo 7, Lima, Lima, Lima. Kilo 7, Lima, 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 5x9 to Park Kilo 1212. Roger, thank you for the 5-9. You're a 5-7 here in Central Oregon. Over. Copy the 5-7 in Central Oregon. 7-3 and thanks for hunting. This is Kilo Mike 4, Charlie Fox Tingo calling CQ for Parks on the Air. Kilo Charlie 7, United X-Ray Mike. Kilo Charlie 7, United X-Ray Mike. You're 5-9 by nine in the park of Kilo 1212. Ah, QSL, you're 5-9, Far West, El Paso, Texas. Copy the 5 by 9 to El Paso, Texas. 7 3 and thanks for hunting. 7 3. As you can see, we've already gotten 13 QS QSOs in a very short time. How long did that take? Uh. Ten minutes. In ten minutes we got ten QSOs already. So definitely works. So I'm gonna go and um, do some seat up CW after this and then um, I'll continue this for a little bit, but you hear that, so 7-3 everyone.